Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's uh, Keyshot 6 Master Series uh, episode uh, about uh, material control, uh, new material capabilities we provide in uh, Keyshot 6. Uh, my name is uh, Dries Vervoort, I am a digital media artist at uh, Luxion. Uh, yeah, without further ado, I think we'll get started on showing the new stuff. The first thing I would like to talk about is the improvements we have made to our uh, the label system for materials. Uh, let me start by applying a paint material to this helmet. Let's pick a blue one. So all of these parts are linked. So by dragging it on the helmet, I have applied the material across all parts. And let me get to this view and go into the material properties, the label tab. I'm going to add a label and let me pick this Keyshot logo. I'm going to um, increase the depth of my label and perhaps decrease the size something like this so the big change with Keyshot 6 is that labels now can have a, a specific material so as I click the label in the label list uh, you can see that, that it is uh, appended with a, a plastic uh, name. So by default, as you apply a new label, it is a plastic material. Uh, underneath the label list, there is a new drop-down for label type. And this specifies the material to be used for the label. So by default, it's plastic but I can change it into a metal and now my label is shaded as a metal. We then can go to the label properties and because it's a metal I get the material properties for a metal and I can control the roughness for instance and You can sort of tweak the reflections uh, in a very yeah, sophisticated way. Uh, this was not possible in Keyshot 5. Uh, in Keyshot 5, the label was either non-reflective or totally re reflective. But now in uh, Keyshot 6, you can specify the roughness, uh, specify the material. So if I want to be if I want this label to be a, a metallic paint, I can do that. I, I can even do that. Um, I can make this label into a tune. So it is uh, shaded very, very flat. And let me add another one. So, I'm going to pick this, uh, perhaps this white one, and place it on top of the other label. Again, increase my default depth, and perhaps rotate it 90 degrees. So now I have a label on top of 
the first one and by clicking this one I can see it's now a plastic again. I can go back to the properties and let me change this into a yellow color. So now I have the first I have this new label which is a plastic and it is placed on top of the first label which I made into a metal. And the nice thing is you can apply different materials to different labels and have them have different material properties. So perhaps I should make this color a bit darker so you can more easily see what's happening with the lighting. So let me change the first metal one, make it slightly rough and then pick the top one. And let me change the environment into something more interesting. So this is a big new feature for Keyshot 6 that you can have uh, labels as you always were able to have but now apply a separate material to them. Um, this new label system allows you to do very unique stuff. Um, uh, with regards to uh, layering materials. So I have this hinge model here and just yeah, for sake of this demo I'm going to drag and drop a plastic material um, let me pick this or perhaps I should pick a metal going into the metal library and pick a basic steel like this one and I'm gonna drag and drop it onto the top group which links all parts uh, material wise together So say I want to have a painted part, uh, yeah I have this metal part and I want to have a paint on top of it and I want some worn edges, I want this base metal to show through the, met the paint that I'm going to apply on top. We can do this effect, we can, we can achieve this effect using the new label system. So as I click Add Label, it's going to prompt me to select an image. I'm just going to select a random image and then delete it again. So what's happened now is that the label is applied. Uh, by default, it's a black plastic. And as you see, if I disable the label, then my paint uh, is gone. So what I want to do now is create a texture that will highlight the the sort of uh, yeah all, all the edges in the model. So the way I do that is by clicking the label and then in the label textures tab, I right click on the diffuse thumbnail, and this gives me an option to load a texture. 
um, it allows me to load a texture map, a bitmap, or I can pick uh, any of the, the procedural textures that are included in Keyshot. Uh, a new one for Keyshot 6 is the occlusion procedural. So let me select that one. Uh, by default, uh, let me expand these options. By default, it has an unoccluded color of white and an occluded color uh, that is black. And what it does is a accentuate sort of shadow regions, so you get more depth in your shadows. But it can be used in very creative ways as well, which is uh, what I'm going to attempt right now. Um, I'm going to put this radius very low. Um, yeah, this procedure has lots of sort of uh, more advanced settings. Uh, I'd like to point them out quickly. Uh, the bias uh, section contains sort of the, the strength and contrast settings for the occlusion effect. The normal parameter controls the, yeah, the contrast and the bias. Let me quickly try to highlight. As I change this value, it sort of increases the, the strength of the occlusion effect in positive, negative direction for both x, y, z. You can change uh, each bias value from minus 1 to 1, but I leave uh, any, every one of these three at 0 for now. Um, Increase the samples a bit. And if I now click uh, inside, this will invert the calculation of surface normals. And in the case of solid bodies, that means that all your edges are now, highlight are now highlighted in, a, in the occluded color. What I want to do is to use uh, this texture as an opacity map for my plastic so that my base material, the metal, shows through. So in this case I am on the right track because these areas are white and this is where I want the paint to show through. So what I want is to apply this uh, texture on the diffuse channel uh, on the opacity channel. So I'm simply clicking, dragging and dropping it onto the opacity and that applies the texture on the opacity channel itself. The reason why I did the setup in the diffuse channel is that it is more easy to see what you're doing and yeah. So let me drag it, drag it onto the opacity and now you can see as I change the label properties uh, color of the plastic that the edges are actually showing the metal underneath. So if I go back to my metal properties and say change it, this into a very saturated bright green color then you get some really nice nice effect um, so with these metal properties selected I have this thumbnail here as well that if I right click it I can even add a texture to the metal color itself. So I can choose, for instance, noise. And I want a noise going from sort of pinkish to green. Like this. 
Then if I play with the scale again, you can now see very subtly that I have some areas of the metal underneath that are green and that fade into uh, the pink tone. So you can create very nice variations using a combination of labels and procedural textures. If I go back to the labels, I can also uh, in the label textures step uh, apply a bump map. So from this drop down, I can pick a fractal. and increase the bump height. So now I have a bump on the on the plastic but not on the edges because they are masked out by the occlusion map. And again we can start layering this material so I can add a new label. Just pick a random image. Get rid of this. Now I have a new label, which is by default a black plastic on top. And say I want to sort of smudge this model with some yellow paint uh, spots. So I'm going to click this new material. Go, uh, yeah, this new label. Go to the label properties. Change this color for the paint into a sort of yellow orange. Going to back to the label textures, and I'm going to click on the opacity channel, choose textures, and then spots. And now I'm going to define the spot parameters for the opacity map. So with the spot, the inside color is the color of your spots. The outside color is the color around the spots. But because I want this to be an opacity channel, my spots have to be white and my outside color has to be black. Now I don't see any spots at all, so I have to tweak my, my scale again. Now you can see there are some spots appearing. You can change a few of these values, make them perhaps too large, make them larger. Going to create some distortion to vary the shape and I think this is looking like what I intended it to look like and because as you can see now because we have layered these labels this new spot label is actually covering these uh, edges as well And what I want now is to use this same texture as a bump map. And I can do that by holding the Alt, the Alt key and then clicking and dragging this texture onto the bump channel. And now I'm using the same, the same texture in a, syn in a synced manner for both bump and opacity. And then I can adjust the bump height and now I'm getting something that looks like yeah something something that looks quite interesting now so you can see with labels you can create very sophisticated looking materials And then again, if I want to vary the color of this yellow paint, painted spots, then I can add a noise texture again. Change these color values. Change the scale again.
perhaps it's very subtle now but the effect is there so let me play with a few of these values yeah so now I have a very subtle gradation going from yellow to more orange like this so yeah the label system is a very nice way of creating much more advanced materials much more interesting materials than was possible in uh, Keyshot 5 basically I have prepared another scene um, where I show another application so using the a combination of the tune material together with yeah here I have a tune material with a occlusion texture applied to the the, the color channel and you can see that you get some very nice uh, sort of drawn uh, illustration style uh, this can be a very neat way of creating uh, views for manuals or for uh, uh, technical illustration purposes um, and can even be more interesting if you start playing with the colors of the lines and adjust the the thicknesses of the or the width of the contour and then independently start tweaking the the color of the of the occlusion which is driving the color of these uh, internal edges so this is a very neat way of creating interesting illustration uh, renderings this is another example where I have some environment shadow as well but it's the same approach uh, a tool material together with a uh, an occlusion procedural uh, on the color channel Yep. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the new material types we have in Keyshot 6. Um, let me get rid of these labels. So, double click. The new material we provide is the plastic material. It is a very uh, simple material uh, with uh, diffuse color. A specular color so the color for your reflections and the roughness parameter this is uh, the go-to material uh, for yeah for all your simple materials uh, uh, where you just want to quickly set a roughness and a refraction index and basically be be done with it you still can texture uh, the all these uh, parameters but it's a, a very quick, a very quick plastic material for setup. Another material we provide is the the new translucent material. So the new translucent is placed in the header advanced. Uh, it's right here, translucent, advanced. Compared to the the one we had in Keyshot 5 already, this one, translucent. Um, the be compared with the old one, we have the benefit of texturing um, many more uh, channels. So we can now texture the subsurface color. We can texture the intensity of the translucency as well as many other parameters. I will quickly show you 
uh, texturing subsurface color on this model. So I have uh, this T-Rex versus King Kong uh, model. Um, the scene is being lit by several uh, point and IS lights. So all the light is coming from these local lights. Now, if I want to texture the subsurface color, I can simply right click on this uh, sort of thumbnail icon that allows me to load a texture and I'm going to use a procedural the color gradient and you can sort of see the effect right now uh, although I'm going to tweak the, the mapping a little bit something like this and I'm gonna increase the scale something like this and I'm gonna adjust the color gradient so that it goes from let's say this sort of a pink tone to a yellow tone like this so now you can see that because I put the gradient like sort of in this direction and it runs from pink to to yellow that my subsurface color which is the color uh, of the light exiting the material again that it now shifts from one pin of the gradient to the other and this is a new capability for Keyshot 6 yeah it wasn't possible to, to texture the subsurface color in uh, previous uh, versions. I've used the uh, procedural texture now but you could also use if you're uh, in the entertainment industry and you're used to using UV maps and uh, all kinds of other uh, sophisticated texturing techniques you could also uh, use a texturing a, a texture map or yeah any of the other procedurals that we provide basically so you could even apply a a noise texture is probably not the best example or something like this I mean, you can go really crazy with this uh, with this stuff so yeah that's one part of the new translucent material the other one is uh, that it also fully interacts with uh, caustics. So I have this milk glass uh, scene here. Um, let me just show you quickly what the scene consists of. So you have a glass which is a glass solid and then there is a liquid inside the glass and this is a volume uh, with the new tr the translucent advanced material applied and then if I zoom out there is one light source in this scene and that's this tiny plane here so you can see all the light in the scene is coming from this plane and it is a area light diffuse and I in this scene I have enabled uh, caustics uh, which uh, renders this nice uh, transparent shadow if I were to turn it off then I wouldn't have light uh, being cast through this this glass onto the milk 
and my glass shadow turns completely opaque as well. So if I turn this on, then I get caustics from the glass uh, onto this ground plane, but I also get caustics from the glass uh, being being cast uh, onto the the milk itself. So, and this is also a new capability for uh, Keyshot 6 that caustics are actually able to interact with the translucent material. So, let me quickly show you what it looks like if I change this material, the milk, back into the old translucent material. So even though I have checked global illumination for the old translucent material, you can see that the it's not looking quite right, this, this milk uh, body. Uh, I get a very dark rim here and I don't get any uh, sort of interaction with the caustics uh, into the milk. So undo for the previous setup. You can see that the new translucent material provides a much better uh, result in this case where you have caustics interacting with the, the translucent material. Another application would be a translucent eyeball where you have uh, a solid glass lens on top. So several specialty applications, but if you need the quality, then the new one is going to provide it. Another new or enhancement of materials in Keyshot 6 is um, that we have uh, new material presets. So if I go to the library, uh, then the last step is the favorites tab, and by default we now provide several uh, uh, se uh, se several uh, presets for different purposes. We have the architectural preset, which contains uh, environments and uh, materials typically used for architecture or yeah building visualization. Uh, we also have an, uh, a jewelry uh, preset collection which contains some typical color swatches for jewelry like gold and platinum silver. Also a few jewelry specific uh, HDRI environments and then also some commonly used uh, materials for both gems and um, and metal in jewelry. So in this case I have this uh, scene of a ring and let me quickly unlink this sort of band and I'm going to drag and drop this uh, platinum onto the ring and then I'm going to shift left click shift right click to paste the material onto this sort of crown and then I need obviously a gem and I'm gonna click and drag this diamond onto the gem and Another thing that has been greatly improved in Keyshot, uh, Keyshot 6 is the rendering of uh, dispersion in gemstones. So for those who are not familiar with uh, dispersion, dispersion is the sort of separation of light colors, of white light uh, into, into its constituent colors. So if I rotate this HDRI and yeah, let me double click this gem and 
the dispersion is controlled by the Abbey number and the lower you put this Abbey number the more apparent your dispersion is going to be and you can see here as I rotate this diamond that you get some very nice coloration into the facets of this diamond and the quality of this the dispersion effect has been greatly improved uh, compared to previous versions of Keyshot so it's very well optimized for jewelry rendering and any other type of rendering where you need uh, this dispersion effect Then something else I want to highlight uh, regarding material control. Um, I have this engine model from one of our users, Esben Oxhall, who has been kind enough to share his, uh, his beta models uh, with us. And this is, I've converted this, uh, his original setup to have a, a single material. Um, so I'm going to look for a metal. Perhaps a titanium. Drag it onto the model. And the lighting is a custom HDRI. So he has put some, some pins at different positions to get some dramatic uh, coloration in the environment. I'm going to double click this material. Um, so I want to talk specifically uh, about uh, roughness. In Keyshot uh, 5, if you wanted to control the roughness, it would be a global sort of uh, parameter. Uh, so you would input a roughness here and it would be a very uniform uh, roughness across all of your material. Now uh, let me just decrease the brightness a little bit like this. Now in Keyshot uh, 6 we can also texture the roughness so uh, I have the roughness parameter here. If I right click on this uh, this thumbnail, I can choose any of the procedural textures, but also a texture map. Uh, by the way, if you just click on this thumbnail, it will prompt uh, a, a file browser where you can select your texture. So I'm going to go to my texture folder and let me find some nice one in, sorry, in here. Let me pick this one. So what you see now is that I have, uh, and my thumbnail is updated, I have a bump map texture driving the roughness of my model. So what's happening is that the Keyshot is now considering the sort of black and white values inside the texture and interpret and translating them to the to the material roughness. So whatever region in the texture is, uh, if, it, if a texture is uh, black it will have roughness of zero if it is white then it will have a roughness of uh, one and any gray uh, colors in between will yeah, gradually shift in roughness and you can see even though this is a very simple material setup I have just uh, a single texture applied to a single parameter, 
you get some very sophisticated uh, look in your material. And I would really encourage uh, if I would really encourage you to uh, play with these uh, textures and texture channels of all the materials because you can create very interesting and sophisticated materials. Uh, you can also switch this material to a metallic paint. And as I switch the material, it has applied the same texture onto uh, to the clear coat roughness. Uh, that's the roughness equivalent for the metallic paint material. As I increase the refraction index, you can sort of see the effect very subtle of the of the texture on the roughness. The metallic paint is a little more advanced of a material, so it allows to texture lot more, lots more uh, parameters. So, and every parameter that has this thumbnail associated with it you can actually texture. So you can texture the metal coverage. So a metal coverage of zero would look like this. Coverage of one would look like this. But say I want to have a varying coverage across the model, I can do that by right-clicking, texture, perhaps click the fractal. Now I can play with these the scale values. And now you can see that across the model, uh, my metal coverage is actually being varied according to the the fractal uh, texture. Yeah, I think this uh, concludes uh, the new material capabilities uh, we provide for everyone using uh, Keyshot 6. Uh, I, I did this demo today using uh, the HD version of Keyshot 6 and I did so because I wanted to show that everyone can have uh, a lot more functionality and a, and a lot more capabilities uh, using materials. And there's still a lot more, uh, a, a lot more effects to, to be achieved with materials, uh, and this is going to be uh, the topic of uh, next week's webinar, where we, where we, where I'll be covering. Um, the more advanced features that come with the material graph for uh, Keyshot Pro. So if you're a pro user or just want even more control of your materials, then uh, you're, yeah, you're invited to join. And so if there are any questions right now, I'll be happy to answer them or to clear things, things up. Hey Dries, great work. Um, I was wondering if you could show everyone um, how you can drag and drop materials onto labels in the labels list from the library. I have to create one, I guess. I'm not even sure I've actually done that before. <laughs> Can you fill me in, Rex? Sure. 
Um, yeah, so if you have the labels tab active, showing yeah. the labels list, um, instead of modifying the parameters manually, uh, if you know what type of material that you want that label to be, you can actually just drag and drop from the material library onto uh, that selected label in your list. Okay. So if you were to take a rough plastic and drag that onto the label in the list, like this one. Will... Yep. Yeah, it, it sort of. So I, I noticed it, it automatically switches to my properties. Um. Okay. Well. I uh, should be able to do that. <laughs> Are you dragging it over the the real time view? Maybe that that's uh, ah yeah. the problem. If if your project window is docked uh, yeah. on the other side, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just. So think. maybe a metal, yeah, with a texture even. Yeah. So. As long as I don't cross the real-time view, it's it's fine. <laughs> so when working between the library and the project window, I actually prefer uh, having the two windows docked side by side, and that just yeah. makes that interaction a little bit easier. Yeah, that makes that makes sense too. Yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> and then since the label already has a uh, color texture assigned to it, um, it doesn't really matter what color material you're using. What's important is uh, the material type and the properties. So you can use those materials that are already defined uh, yeah, if yeah. you know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, we have uh, somebody asking for a source for more textures. Um, so uh, we do have the Keyshot Cloud Library, which uh, you can see in the, the bottom left corner of the toolbar there. Let me just quickly log in. And there you can find uh, several texture maps, also materials that are already textured, including our mold tech plastics. Yep, you can even sort them if you want to have like the most downloaded ones. So all of those textures can be used directly in Keyshot. When yep. you click that download button, it'll go to your downloads folder in the library uh, ready for you to use. So, okay. download the texture. It's it's loaded into this download header. So this is the one I just downloaded. Mm -hmm. Um, and you also talk about modifying the color of a label without having to change it in, say, Photoshop. I Notice before you were using that white key shot label, and yeah. you're able to blend with color to yeah. actually modify the color. Can you show that again? So I now have this key shot label. Um, if I click it and go to the label properties, uh, it's loaded in the diffuse channel. So by expanding this uh, diffuse parameter, I get this option for blend with color that if I click it or enable it, then it will blend the color uh, defined by the swatch here with the, exist the existing uh, label image. So if I set this to red, 
then it will blend the color. Again, so, sorry. Go ahead. Again, uh, more sophisticated options for changing colors and blending are going to be part of next week's webinar, where we'll be exploring the material graph and the different utilities and nodes you have there to, to change, for instance, only parts of, of, a, of a label and not the label in its, in its entirety. Um, so what I was going to say is that uh, if you do intend on assigning a label and uh, modifying the color of it for different variations of your design, I think the best workflow is actually having that weight label as a white color. And that yeah, way yeah. when you blend with, as you can see in this example, we had some blue before that is now becoming green because it's blending with that orange. Um, and then yeah. the black areas, you don't really see any of that orange color. So if that label is white, then you can blend with color and use any color uh, to modify yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And if you have a graphic of, for instance, a, a, a bottle label, it can be worthwhile to like separate out different regions of that label and save them out as different uh, white labels. If that makes sense. So you can have uh, multiple labels stacked here and then color them separately or apply even different materials. Um, all right. Well, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock here in California. Um, thank you for this excellent webinar, Dries. Um, as a reminder, a recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash keyshot3d. And you can also find more uh, tutorials, videos, quick tips, and webinars at keyshot.com slash learning. Look forward to next week's um, master webinar series where Dries will be going into more detail of uh, using materials and showing what you can do in Keyshot Pro and the material graph. So looking forward to it and uh, see you all there next week. <laughs>